Praise the Lord. We're here with Katie. Back. Welcome back, Katie Emily Hughes. Thank you. And Michael Amola. Hello, Steve. And we are talking about the miracle of Easter. He is risen. Amen. What makes Easter so exciting, Katie? It's like a, a rebirth in your faith, and it's a marking of a year, starting of a new season and year um, to dig- dedicate your life to Jesus, and um, it's a joyous time. It's the holiest time, um, and what Jesus worked for on this earth for us, um, you know, that was the end product was he came back from the dead, and he brought us salvation and everlasting life through that, uh, through that miracle of Easter. Michael Bonapasqua, <laughs> in our Italian tradition. Um, what makes Easter so important to you? Well, for me, you know, getting through Lent and getting through my Diet Coke addiction, that's, that's number one. <laughs> and he has a Diet Coke in front of him, ladies No, I do not. <laughs> no, okay. Just coffee. Yeah. Okay. But, uh, no, for me, Easter is it's the culmination of the Lenten season. And, uh, you know, going through uh, the Easter week services with Holy Thursday, Good Friday, uh, the Easter Vigil, and Easter Sunday, it's just, it, it's so powerful for me. It just reminds me, you know, how proud I am to be a Catholic. Indeed, Easter is the greatest feast in the Catholic Church and the Catholic calendar. And on Easter Sunday, this coming Sunday, we will celebrate the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. Easter Sunday comes 40 days after prayer and fasting. And after the struggle with uh, self-denial, we've prepared ourselves to be with Christ. We've experienced Good Friday. And when Easter comes, we will rise with him again. And that's what's so important is the fact that Easter is a fulfillment of our faith in as Christians. St. Paul said that unless Christ rose from the dead, our faith is in vain. In 1 Corinthians 15, 17, I'd ask that everyone get their Bibles out. And through his death, Christ saved mankind from bondage to sin, destroyed the hold that death has on all of us. And by his resurrection... We have the promise of new life, as Scripture tells us, Katie. If we die with him, we will also rise with him. What does that mean, that he broke the bondage of sin and death? Well, I think he, he, well, I know he saved us from ourselves. Um, We, on our own, cannot be saved, and God our Father knew that, and he sent us Jesus to teach us the way, um, and despite his message, he was still rejected. And that was for us to also understand when we accept Jesus as our Savior, we too uh, will be rejected at times and we must die to ourselves. And, you know, those, that feeling of persecution and rejection, we must understand that's our cross and that's part of Jesus' cross. But with that, um, when we die, we also are reborn with him. And that's what we celebrate at Easter. We know on Easter Sunday, as we pray thee, our Father, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as is in heaven, that Jesus told his disciples that they would not die until they saw the kingdom of God coming in power in Mark 9.1. Easter is the fulfillment of that power fulfillment of the resurrection of Christ, that God's kingdom is established on earth. And as you said, Katie, it means we have new life. That's why on Easter vigil, we have the catechumens, our CIA candidates receive either confirmation, baptism, or both. Easter is a big part about baptism. That's why we renew our baptismal vows on Easter. It makes it so important. 
you know, I get so excited about Easter. I mean, it is absolutely incredible. It's not about Easter bunnies, is it? It's not about candy. It's about Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. And Jesus is there and has made all things new. And, you know, did you see, um, you see the movie, um, The Passion of the Christ, Michael? Yes. Um, it, it's actually uh, a movie that I watch every Easter season. Um, and it's powerful. Uh, if our listeners have not had an opportunity to see that movie, I would really urge them to, uh, to rent it or uh, somehow get a hold of it that they can watch it. Because it, there's some parts of it for me that are, are, are very uncomfortable, very uncomfortable. Um, but it is clearly a graphic portrayal of what Jesus did to redeem all of our souls. And, and I just find that uh, it, it, it really reinforces to me that you know the suffering that Jesus went through uh, on Good Friday uh, is, is just, it's something that I can't comprehend as a human. I mean, I know what he did, uh, but the, the, the pain and suffering he went through for me uh, is a very humbling thought. One of my favorite parts about that movie is when Jesus looks at the Blessed Mother and says, Behold, I make all things new. And take a look now at Revelation. You probably haven't spent that much time in Revelation, but take a look at Revelation. Katie, I know you really like Re Revelation. And if you look at Revelation 21, the new heaven and the new earth, this is about what Easter is. A lot of people don't go to Reve uh, Revelation, the book of Revelation for Easter. But Revelation 21.4, he will wipe every tear from their eyes, and there'll be no more death of mourning, wailing, or pain. The old order has passed away. Every tear is wiped away, Katie. I mean, all the pain and suffering, pain and suffering of losing loved ones, of health, of jobs, of just all the disappointments in life. What's that mean to you, that every tear will be wiped away? I think for me, it's, uh, it's reminding me that uh, I don't have to worry. There's, Jesus has it, and he, um, he took away, he was able to take away that sin, the, the doubt, the worries. Um, he was the, he's the fulfillment, and he is, he's the new covenant. He is, um, he is the answer to our prayers, you know, and, and I feel uh, sad and it grieves me to think that people don't accept it, that um, Jesus died for them and that they need not worry. They need not um, go to places of doubt and um, go to the wrong places to find uh, salvation. Um, Jesus is the truth and and it's such a, um, a powerful uh, realization when you realize that if you were the only person on earth on that day that he died, he would have done it for you. Amen. 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 Going on in verse um, chapter 21, verse 5 and following, the one who sat on the throne said, Behold, I make all things new. What's that mean to you, Michael? Jesus, through his death and resurrection, makes all things new. Well, uh, I think that uh, what I take from that is that, you know, it's our rebirth. It's our ability to um, be free uh, from our sins. He's given us the gift of eternal life, and, and it becomes our responsibility to uh, embrace that gift and, and and walk with him through our lives. Further on, it says, he said to me, they are accomplished. I am the Alpha, the Omega, the beginning and the end. To the thirsty, I will give a gift from the spring of life, giving water. The victor will inherit these gifts, and I shall be his God, and he will be my son. 
And wow, you know, this new heaven, this new earth that Jesus has given us through his death and resurrection, how awesome is that? It's, um, it's amazing to me. I think of um, when he speaks to the, uh, the woman at the well and how she didn't quite understand what, what he talked about, about um, being the water, the still water of the, um, the well is much different than the life of uh, a moving uh, spring. You know, Jesus is uh, everlasting, ever giving. And um, I just think about that, how he came for all of us. Amen. And <clears throat> it's so important to reflect upon how much God loves us, how much the Father loves us. So there's going to be seven things that we talk about. What a surprise, Michael, seven. The seven gifts of Easter, seven miracles of Easter. Um, again, what's the definition of a miracle? It's God's intervention, supernatural intervention in our life. And there's nothing more supernatural than Jesus' death and resurrection. So the first gift, first miracle, is the gift of salvation. John 3.16, what's that say, Katie? For God so loved the world that he gave his only son, so that whoever believes in him might not perish, but have eternal life. Eternal life. Does it say that we have to have perfect life to have eternal life, never sin? No, he takes us as we are. Because it's his death, my brothers and sisters, it's his death, it's his blood that wipes us clean. He said, I will wipe you clean, right? Even though you're in Isaiah, even though your sins may be like scarlet, you will be as white as snow. Why is that? Because of his death and resurrection. Verse 18 says, whoever believes in him will not be condemned. My brothers and sisters, do you understand that? Do you understand the good news of Jesus Christ? Whoever believes in him will have eternal salvation. We see that again in, in Romans 10. Well, I'll tell you, I, it's just so important that we know Scripture, Katie. You know, and, and my brothers and sisters, you know, just chew on it, imbibe it, read it, experience it, rejoice in it. You know, it's just so important. We see in Romans 10, verse 9, if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord, believe in your heart, that he rose from the dead, you will be saved. If we believe that Jesus rose from the dead in our heart, notice it doesn't say on our head. Now, why is that, Michael? Why does it say in our heart? Um, because I, it, for it to be in your heart, you have embraced it. You have embraced the Lord. Um, and I, I know for me that I believe it. I know it. Uh, and yet, as a human, uh, I, I always struggle with doubt. We did we did uh, a show a couple of weeks ago on doubt. And it, as human beings, I think that creeps into our nature. And we have to remember that, that Jesus is stronger than that. Jesus, again, because he died on the cross for our sins, he wants what is best for us. And we have to embrace that. Well, verse 16 of John 3, John 3, 16, John 3, 18, so we must believe in him, which is really means we must make him Lord of our life. See, that's the big difference. We must make him Lord of our life. Um, and why is that such a big difference? You know, I think living in the righteousness of God, his will, that is the answer as far as that's the true testament that you really put him first and when you put him first in your heart then you you may have sometimes and there's that temptation to have doubt and you know it's important as soon as that starts to happen that you focus on Jesus it's important that you realize that you can cast those thoughts you have power because Jesus' name, there's power in that. 
And when you focus on him rather than the problem, well, then that mountain of whatever is wrong in your life isn't so big anymore because Jesus is, nothing can surmount Jesus. Um, He can do anything uh, for us. He's broken through the bonds of pain. He's broken through our burdens. He's told us to to yoke to him, right? Mm -hmm. And he's there with us. I think that's a good point, uh, Katie, that, that, you know, to have the relationship with Jesus when we get in those times of trial, we remember to call on him. And when we don't have that relationship, it's not so much of an um, immediate response to think of the Lord and call on the Lord to help us. Mm-hmm. And that's why it's so important on a daily basis that we work on strengthening our relationship Mm -hmm. with Jesus because it becomes second nature. It's like a sport. You know, if you practice a sport, you get better at it. Mm -hmm. If you practice your faith, you get better at it. And part of that growing relationship is doing things in your life, changing your life. So if something disrupts your relationship with Jesus, some habits, um, you know, I think of myself, and I catch myself being sarcastic, um, and I realize, yes, <laughs> I can be sarcastic. The, the eyebrows times. went up here. <laughs> <laughs> and that's something I, w- uh, I am working on in Lent is stopping myself, and I know that what I'm saying or thinking, even though that person I'm saying it about isn't there, it's harmful to them. It's harmful to myself. It's out there. It's a negative thing. It's not of Jesus. And I don't want to propagate um, evil in the world. And so it's really important. I realize what I take in with my eyes, what I take in with my senses, uh, the things that I say to people, uh, my attitude towards people, and my situation um, during troublesome times. Uh, if I start blaming things on other people for my problems, That's not what Jesus wants. And um, so it's not easy to go straight to with those negative thoughts at first and call on the name of Jesus. I think you really have to be dedicated to that relationship. Um, It can't be a surface thing. It can't be um, going to church once a week and that's it. It can't be, um, you know, looking looking Christian in some ways, but in your heart you aren't. Um, That's really important. The love is very important. My brothers and sisters weren't empowered by the Spirit talking about the miracle of Easter, and we're talking about seven different aspects of that miracle. The first is the gift of salvation, and what Michael Amola and Katie Hughes have been talking about is the importance of a relationship, the importance of turning your heart over to Jesus. You see, Scripture tells us that even the demons believe that Jesus is the Son of God. Demons know that Jesus rose from the dead. The difference is that they don't trust in him and believe in him as Lord. So we must believe in him, as the scripture says. We must trust in him in order to have that gift of salvation, which God wills in 1 Timothy 2.4 God wills everyone to be saved and become to the knowledge of the truth. We realize that God does not condemn. We see Romans 8.1. There's no condemnation in Christ Jesus. No condemnation at all. We see that through the woman who had committed adultery. We see that through the prodigal son. We see that through story after story, prodigal after prodigal. The point is, is that when we trust in Jesus, Jesus, I trust in you, when we turn our hearts to him, when we believe in him, when we we make him Lord of our life, that's when the gift of salvation bears root. The second miracle of Easter is the gift of the Holy Spirit. You see, Jesus said, I'm going to be going. But in John 14, 26, the advocate, the Holy Spirit, will lead you in my my name. He will teach you everything and remind you of all that I taught you. The Holy Spirit teaches us how to live our lives. He gives us the fruits of thy spirit in Galatians 5, 22. 
love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, generosity, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. We realize that the miracle of Easter is accepting the fact that we are children of God. It is accepting the fact that we, if we are led by the Spirit, the Holy Spirit, which is a gift. Take a look at Romans 8 now. Turn to that. Romans eight fourteen. For those who are led by the Spirit of God are children of God. For you did not receive a spirit of slavery to fall back in a fear, but a spirit of adoption through which we cry, Abba, Father. The Spirit itself bears witness with our spirit that we are children of God, and if children, then heirs, heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ. If we suffer with him, we will be glorified with him. We will rise from the dead with him. You see, that's the miracle of realizing that the Holy Spirit leads us to Jesus to become children of God. How is the Holy Spirit important in this whole equation of the miracle of Easter, Katie? The um, the Holy Spirit, I think, can help you, I think, inspire you um, during this time. Sometimes it Sometimes when you're sitting at Mass for Easter or any other time, um, maybe there's distractions. Maybe uh, you're not quite understanding the importance of Easter and the miracle of it. But you can always call on the Holy Spirit to guide you, to touch your heart. Um, you know, sometimes I'm at Mass, uh, daily Mass or Sunday Mass, and I don't feel connected always. Um, I'm distracted in some way. And so I, I can call on the Holy Spirit to lead me, um, to touch my heart so that I can be more in tune and really appreciate and love the Eucharist and love my faith and love this whole meaning of Easter. We do this every Sunday. We celebrate Easter every Sunday. And, um, you know, the death and the resurrection of Jesus. And so that is the main point of our Mass. And if you're not understanding that importance, a lot of your time um, at Mass is wasted. And God doesn't want that for you. And He gave us the Holy Spirit to help endure those times of um, when you're questioning uh, what your faith is. Katie, our ministry is called Spirit-Filled Hearts, and the third miracle is that through the gift and miracle of resurrection of Easter, that God is always with us, and nothing will separate us from the love of Christ. We see this in Romans 8, 35 and following, what will separate us from the love of Christ, for I'm convinced that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor present things, nor future things, nor powers, nor height, nor death, nor any other creature will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. God is love, and he showed us that love, the Father, by giving his only begotten Son. If you think about Easter, you think about the fact that we are connected with God forever. We know that as we see in 1 John 4, 8, whoever is without love does not know God, for God is love. And in John 14, 23, whoever loves me will keep my word, and my Father will love him, and we will come back to him and make our dwelling with him. Michael, if the Father, Jesus, the Holy Spirit, through the miracle of Easter, is making a dwelling in our heart and soul. What does that mean to you about the miracle of Easter? Well, yeah, I mean, it, it really solidifies for me and, and places great emphasis on the fact that, you know, I am in a relationship with him. He is a part of me. And, and being a part of me 
that is what I have to nurture and nurture that through practicing my faith. But the Easter season has has given me uh, the tremendous opportunity to rethink, relook, reemphasize the importance of my faith as I journey through Lent and then get to uh, the uh, Easter services. And it, it, it quite frankly is almost, over, over, not almost, it's overwhelming. I mean, that Jesus wants to have that relationship with me. I mean, I'm blessed. Katie, there are times we feel broken, we feel alone, we feel deserted. But through the miracle of Easter, we should never feel alone. The Holy Spirit, Jesus, is always with us. When you feel alone, how do you bring Jesus into your heart, into your life? Well, in those times of sadness or grief, um, I just, I always know that Jesus is there. You know, you think of he's carrying you through those hard times. And I think of that poem of the footsteps um, in the sand, and he's the one carrying you. And so if you, you know, even when you know people that are going through a difficult time, sometimes that's harder than your own pain is what other people go through. And I like to pray for those people, and I ask the Lord to embrace them, um, hold them um, in a spiritual sense, hold their heart, you know, encourage them, Lord, through this difficult time. And, um, you know, the, I just keep, as this radio show is going on, I keep thinking of the people, some of the greatest testaments are those, um, are there Christian martyrs right now? I mean, you can't imagine, I mean, you could say that you would do the same thing, die for Jesus. But there's so many people dying right now and how they, they truly believe that there's no doubt in their Amen. mind. And I know they have that grace. And so I ask for that grace. And maybe your martyrdom is um, not in the physical sense. But know that when you're um, under fire from people, um, people questioning your faith, drilling you about how can that be real? How do you prove it? Um, you don't have to prove it. Just live it. And we pray, my brothers and sisters, for Christian mourners all over the world. We know in the Middle East and Africa, there's so much going on in terms of sacrifice. And we pray in the name of Jesus for their protection. We've been talking about the miracle of Easter, the gift of salvation, the gift of the Holy Spirit, the gift that we are children of God, the gift that Jesus is never apart from us. We certainly hope you're enjoying this program. This is a collaboration between the SOAR ministry and our ministry, Spirit-Filled Hearts. We know the Holy Spirit's uniting us together. We'd love to hear from you. Contact us at empowered at spiritfilledhearts.org. That's empowered at spiritfilledhearts.org. Or certainly you can contact us at Deacon Steve at spiritfilledhearts.org. Deacon Steve at spiritfilledhearts.org. Well, we're so excited. This is Holy Week, the holiest week of the year. The Tritium is coming up. Easter's in a few days. Holy Thursday, Good Friday, Easter Vigil, Easter. It's a time to rejoice and be glad. God bless you, and we're going to take a short break. We'll be right back. Three, two, one. One. Happy Easter. Alleluia. <laughs> we're back again on Empowered by the Spirit, and we're talking about the miracle of Easter. We've been focusing on the gift of salvation, the gift of the Holy Spirit, we're talking about how nothing will separate us from the love of God, from the love of Jesus, because of Easter, because we are loved, we are children of God. The fourth key point of miracle, the gift of miracles of Easter, is that we are to receive and do receive the strength of God our Father as a result of breaking the bondage of sin, the bondage of death. What does this scripture mean for you, Katie? 
Philippians 4.19, my God will fully supply whatever you need in accord with his glorious riches in Christ Jesus. I think um, you can focus on the fact that, you know, he's supplying everything you need. Jesus, he gave us his son. Uh, he gave us salvation for us to receive. <clears throat> All we have to do is truly believe and receive his love. And we can always tap into God and his salvation and his love rather than um, go to this world of evil where there's despair, there's lies. And if you focus on uh, Jesus through those times, um, then you're using that gift, um, God's powerful gift of love. And um, you, you can't lose. You can't lose with God's love. You know, and, and that's so truth. We have the supernatural strength of the Father to endure our trials. And I know, Michael, you've endured trials. And, you know, Easter breaks the bondage of sin, the bondage of trials. How do we use that Easter joy when we have trials with our children, let's say? And, and I know you've had uh, your share like we all have. I, I don't know a parent who hasn't. You know, but uh, I mean, just as, as you were as you were talking, I was just thinking, you know, how do you bottle the um, the grace that you feel at Easter to carry with you on a day by day basis? And and you're right, Steve. I mean, we do have daily trials. Everybody has daily trials. Um, life is messy. Life is not easy. And I think that for me, what it has to be a constant is when you do have those trials, when you do have those challenges, uh, to remember to call on the Lord. That's the reinforcement. That's the energizer is to remember that, you know, God wants us to be happy. Jesus wants us to be happy, uh, but not without work. Um, and as we have challenges, be they with our families in the workplace in personal relationships, as we have those challenges, I know I need something to fall back on. I need to have something to strengthen me when I get to you know the end of my wits, if you would. And and I'm I just feel eternally blessed that in times of challenge, just simply to call out the name of Jesus. Uh, and you know, you you can't be dealing with a problem and call out the name of Jesus and not feel that the weight of that problem shifts. may not altogether lift, but it shifts because you remind yourself that you're not alone. You're with the Lord. It's so important, Michael, that you talk about this. And the holy name of Jesus, you know, the saints always talked about Jesus and, and praising him and, and really glorifying him by calling out the name of Jesus we see that with St. Augustine. We see this with St. Ignatius of Loyola and all the saints. You also talked about joy. And we see in, in again, get out your Bibles, John 15, 11. I've told you this so that my joy may be in you and your joy may be complete. So we get our strength from joy as uh, kind of that insight that my wife Marianne had, joy stands for Jesus over you. Well, Easter is about the joy of rejoicing, a derivative of joy, in the fact that Jesus is our Savior. And that is the good news of the gospel, is that Jesus is our Savior. And if he's our Savior, do we need fear anything, Katie? No. And in fact, it's really important that you share that joy with others and be share your testimony, share your experience with Jesus and the joy that he's brought you through the gospel, through your faith, um, through the Eucharist, um, through prayer, um, praise music, whatever it is. Uh, I think if you're not sharing it, it's not spreading. And that's what, you know, we're working also with the Holy Spirit, and that's what the Holy Spirit helps us do, is to spread that joy. 
and um, and God wants us to share it with everyone. And sometimes it's just your attitude. People can just see your face. They can see in your eyes, your manner. You know, I've gone through um, difficult times, and people don't even people that know me know my my struggles, but. Um, they will often say, it doesn't even show. And I think it's because of the joy that's in me that I can cast out those negative thoughts and, um, n- and know that I'm saved. And sometimes that's hard for Catholics to say, I'm saved, Jesus is my Savior, He's my personal Savior. But He is your Savior. And um, don't be afraid of saying that. You're still Catholic. Um, but it, you need to have a voice and share that because that's how we're going to spread the good news. We see um, the importance of rejoicing. Your favorite scripture, uh, Michael, uh, Philippians 4.4, 4, rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I say rejoice. How does that give you strength? Well, uh, you're right. Philippians is, is uh, uh, really powerful for me. And I think that, you know, as we talk about rejoicing, uh, what, what I think about is in rejoicing, we're grateful, in grateful gratitude. And you cannot have um, a, you can't be down when you think about gratitude and you're rejoicing in the Lord. And I know for me, an attitude of gratitude is very, very important. In Philippians 4, if when we go to verse 13, that we have the strength for everything through him who empowers me. And again, that all of our needs are going to be met in verse 19. But the strength through him of who is there to empower us, who is there to give us his joy, who is there to give us his peace, who breaks through the bondage of sin in this Easter miracle who breaks through the bondage of death. My brothers and sisters, when you're going through a hard time, use that Easter joy that Michael talked about. Use Jesus, the Holy Spirit, that Katie talked about. Use the importance of understanding that Easter is not just a day, but it's the fact that we have been saved for all of eternity. And all of us go through these troubling times. I was sharing with you in a previous show that several weeks ago, my daughter Laura was diagnosed with cancer, lung cancer. And when that happens, 40-year-old with two small children, and please pray for her and pray in thanksgiving for the healing of Laura. When that happens, you can go in a couple different directions. It happened out of the blue, no symptoms at all. As a matter of fact, it was a snowy day, February 8th, and she was coming back from taking her son, six-year-old, ski lessons. It's a two-lane highway. It's about 5.30 at night. It was dark back in upstate New York. And a woman with also a small child, a little girl in the car, was distracted, was just, who knows what was going on. Literally was on the wrong side of the road in her lane, coming right at her. My daughter honked the horn again and again, nothing. Finally, right before a head-on collision, my daughter veered into the other lane. The other woman, seeing that she's in the wrong lane, instinctively moved out of that lane into the other lane broadsiding my daughter and thank God that my son-in-law and her other child was not in the car on the right side of the car because they probably would have been killed. But as it was, the car was total, went into a snowbank, concussions on behalf of my daughter and my grandson. My daughter went to the emergency room They did a CT scan, and what do they find? 3.7 centimeter mass that no one knew existed. 
But Jesus knew. And Jesus allowed that accident to happen. From that time on, the last number of weeks have been a trial. And there's been some ups and downs. She has stage three lung cancer. When those things happen, Michael, we have a choice to make. Do we retain the Easter joy? Or do we get in despair? Do we believe that God is in charge? Or do we basically give up? Well, I, I have experienced that experience somewhat with you and, and the the thing that I find striking because you do walk the talk I mean when when that happened and uh, you know you and I were first talking about it um, and then the the mass as yet not diagnosed as cancer but that mass was identified the the first thing that came out of your lips was that you were grateful that God had uh, allowed that accident to happen so that you would know, Laura would know, uh, of this mass growing in her body. And, you know, that it just points out, as you've said many times before, that the Lord moves in our life in, in ways we don't understand. Um, but he is always moving towards good in our life. And that was a perfect example. And, and quite frankly, I was I was amazed, uh, you know, because that that's the first time that I've I've experienced through you, you know, a, a grave event happening in your family, and you didn't waver, and, and neither did Marianne, and and, and that was a, a a real, you know, strong life lesson for me. We are expecting miracles. We know that God loves Laura, my daughter, more than I could ever possibly imagine. And we pray that love and healing upon her and expect the miracles, whatever happens, that God's hand is upon her. And so we do draw our strength with this miracle number four of Easter. Miracle number five is what we've been touching upon, that the Father makes all things work for good. The accident, finding out about the Mass so that she could be treated. Romans eight twenty eight. We know that all things work for good. Here's the important line. For those who love God and are called according to his purpose. What does that mean, Katie? I think um, when you love God, you truly love him and you've given him your heart. Um, you are his servant and he's calling you um, to live a life of a di making a difference. And... Um, He's, he really wants your faith to grow in him. He wants you to work with him. He um, will give you the tools that you need. And um, it's a defining moment in your life. And sometimes God gets you when you're at the bottom. And um, it's so that he can rebuild you in, in the perfect image that he created you to be. And... Uh, you know, whatever your trials may be, there's ask for grace, um, ask for God's Holy Spirit to come upon you, and um, ask Him to lead you to serve Him. Because once you've chosen Him, He's going to call upon you to do great things, but you must be obedient and truly honor that relationship with Him. God is love, and when we surrender to that love, we know that blessings occur. First Thessalonians 5, 16 and 18. Rejoice always in all circumstances. Give thanks for this is the will of God for you in Christ Jesus. How can we give thanks for my daughter getting in an accident? How can we give thanks for getting fired from a job or you know, having a husband or a wife leave you? Mm -hmm. How is that possible? I think, especially when what I had said before is God's calling you to a, um, a deeper relationship with him, and that includes changing your life, and he will change it for the better. 
and um, don't expect to understand what he's doing. That's not that's not possible always. Um, usually it's when you look back and you say, oh, wow, God was working and guiding me, um, protecting me, and I didn't realize it. He was getting me out of a bad situation. I was in a, in a job that wasn't Christ-like, and I wasn't serving him through it, and I was around um, people not of the Lord. And so you usually you realize it afterwards. But when you're going through it, um, you know, don't be mad at God. Rather, um, ask Him to continue to guide you and help you to understand and ask for more faith and trust in Him. And um, I, when you think of trust, I think of the divine mercy and it says, Jesus, I trust in you. Um, so that's a wonderful way to lead yourself um, during those difficult times when you don't understand. But God has a path for you. And so when you choose that path, um, he's going to allow things to happen, tragedy, um, things that upset you. And it's because he's calling you to a purified life in him. My brothers and sisters, we're empowered by the Spirit. We're talking about the miracles of Easter. We were talking about 1 Thessalonians 5 and 16 and 18, that we need to give thanks for all circumstances. Remember, it's not in all circumstance, for for all circumstance, because from that, blessings will fall when we're grateful, when we, when we give thanks. And Michael... Um, it's amazing since this has happened with my daughter. You know, we've gotten even closer. And uh, she had a particular setback in which, um, at the time, they thought a pulmonary vein was collapsing and that she had her heart was being compromised. And we weren't even sure she was going to last the night. And we took uh, red eyes uh, that got us into uh, Albany. Um, in uh, you know, in on a Friday morning, and that night I slept, or kind of slept, in a chair next to her bed all night, praying with her. First time ever, we prayed the rosary together. Hallelujah! First time ever, we really spent time talking about Jesus in a deep way, how much Jesus loved her talking about scripture, talking about the power of prayer. I mean, isn't that something to be thankful for? It, it absolutely is. And, and you know, I, I would have to imagine that that experience, whatever the outcome of, of this event with Laura, but that experience of being able to spend that time with her in communion with God, you know, you, your daughter, and the Lord, I mean, it's it's overpowering. It, it it's it's such a blessing, and I'm sure for Laura, um, it 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 is an energizer that she needed at that time, and and the Lord knew that. The Lord knew that. The Lord put you there in that situation, and uh, you know we just continue to pray for her recovery and believe absolutely and believe. Pray with expected faith, my brothers and sisters. Pray fervently with your heart. Praise God for what he's doing. Um, point number six in the miracle of Easter is that as a result of his death and resurrection, we have a mansion in heaven. John 14, 2, in my father's house, there are many dwelling places. If there were not what I've told you, I'd prepare a place for you. My brothers and sisters, what is your dwelling place? What is your mansion? Katie, 1 Corinthians 2.9, what eye has not seen, what ears have not heard, what has not entered the human heart, what God has prepared for those who love him. What's your mansion? What's your heaven look like? Mm -hmm. um, I think the brightest, purest light possible, and um, I think the no, really receiving all of the love and understanding the love that God has for me and um, being a, being around souls that are experiencing that and praising him 
um, for all eternity. And I also, you know, I could see serving God in even a greater way uh, up in heaven um, with all my brothers and sisters. It is, Michael, indescribable joy when we're with Jesus on earth, when we're with him every second, when we experience his presence in heaven. No wonder there's no tears. No wonder there's no death. No wonder there's no sorrow. I believe that, um, you know, heaven is going to be, you know, so beyond comprehension, which is what the scripture says. But for me, there will be three things in my mansion. <laughs> and he's laughing. And what are they, Michael? There'll be fountains. There'll be fountains. There'll be flowers. Flowers and fruit, fruit trees. trees. Okay. <laughs> Abundance yeah. of fruits. Um, it will be so joyful, and I can't wait to be with all those who love Jesus, to be with the two of you and my wife and my family and all those, all of you out there, radio listeners. The seventh part of the miracle of Easter is that we have faith. You know, the, the disciples were broken. They were given up. They were behind locked doors, even Peter, all of them. John, they were behind locked doors. But what happened? What happened was Pentecost. What happened was Jesus appearing to the disciples. And when we have the gift of the Holy Spirit, as we've talked about in Luke eleven thirteen, that when we ask for it, the Father will give it to us. When we ask for faith in Hebrews eleven six, that when we believe that he exists, he rewards those who seek him. When all of those things happen, we are part of the miracle of Easter. So my brothers and sisters, this is Deacon Steve Greco. We've been talking about the many aspects of the miracle of Easter. Eternal salvation, what a gift. The power of the Holy Spirit breaking through the bonds of death breaking through the bonds of sin, the Holy Spirit leading us. That the Father dwells in our heart and nothing will separate us from the love of God. That we have strength to endure the trials. And thank you for praying in praise and thanksgiving and praying rosaries for my daughter's recovery. Laura, that all things work for good for he or she who loves the Lord and is called according to his purpose that we will have a mansion in heaven. That mansion is being prepared for us. That we will get faith that surpasses understanding, a faith that will trigger blessings and union with God. When we hunger and thirst for the joy of Easter, we will be filled. My brothers and sisters, it is so exciting to be with you. And it's so exciting to be part of the sower. This weekend is Tritium. Good Friday is Friday night, so there will be not any sower event. But come the following week at St. Francis of Rome Catholic Church, 501 East Foothold Boulevard in the city of Azusa, 730 to 930 p.m. Contact us at the sower prayer line, 877-71-GLORY. That's 877-714-5679. To learn more about the SOAR ministry, visit our website at JesusTheSOAR.com. That's JesusTheSOAR.com. This radio program is a collaboration between our ministry, Spirit for the Hearts, and SOAR ministry. Visit our website. What's our website, Katie? SpiritFilledHearts.org. That's what? spiritfilledhearts.org and like us on Facebook and Twitter and Facebook is facebook.com backslash spiritfilledhearts and Twitter is spirithearts1 spirithearts1 also we're so excited that we have so many of the radio shows and TV appearances on YouTube Go to Deacon Steve Greco on YouTube, and you will see a list of recordings. 
Come to our prayer meeting on uh, April 11th, Spirit-Filled Hearts, 7 to 9 p.m., 9 Hillgate in the city of Irvine. Please come, and we'll be excited to pray with you and over you. We're also really excited over our book, Daily Meditational, 365 Days of Praise. It's a book, it's a really an amazing opportunity to get closer to Christ through Scripture, through prayer and reflection. It's available online, Amazon.com, Kindle, BarnesandNoble.com. We'd certainly like to hear from you. Contact us at Deacon Steve Greco at SpiritfilledHearts.org. That's Deacon Steve Greco at SpiritfilledHearts.org. Heavenly Father, we thank you, we praise you, we worship you, we glorify you. We pray Easter blessings upon you. We pray blessings of this holy week, that you may always be filled with the joy of Easter, that you may always be filled with the love of Jesus, that you may receive a new Pentecost, a new anointing, that you may receive the fruits of thy spirit, love, joy, peace, patience, understanding, self-control, kindness, generosity. We thank you, Lord, for healing you and healing all of us and healing my daughter, spiritually, mentally, emotionally, and physically. We thank you for your many miracles, your many Easter miracles. And I pray the power of the Holy Spirit upon you through the intercession of the Immaculate Heart of Mary, through the intercession of the Sacred Heart of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, I pray this abundant blessing upon you. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Happy Easter. God bless you. We'll be with you next week at the same time.